Ming Lava and welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I am Aga Jo. Today we are reports on Union Minister guiding people to follow quarantine steps. Yangon Circular Railway upgrade expected to be completed at the end of 2020. Online service becoming widespread in library sector and returnees going home after 21 days of quarantine. All of that on this edition of Myanmar Today. But for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. Union Minister for International Cooperation U Jo Ding participated in the video conference of the 13th Mekong Japan Foreign Ministers Meeting at 1 p.m. yesterday from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Nebido. The meeting was attended by foreign ministers of the Cambodia, Laos, and Thailand from Mekong countries. At the meeting, the ministers discussed and exchanged views on enhancing Mekong-Japan cooperation to effectively prevent and control the COVID-19 and to achieve the universal health coverage. The ministers also discussed ways to strengthen the cooperation for post-COVID-19 economic recovery in the Mekong region. In his statement, Union Minister U Jo Din mentioned that the Mekong countries have been able to bring the COVID-19 pandemic under control. In sharing Myanmar's experience, he stated that Myanmar has also been able to control the virus so far, attributing to its early action on monitoring since early this year and the ability to mobilize the people, volunteers, well-wishers through its whole-of-nation approach. He added that the government has adopted the COVID-19 emergency recovery plan to cushion the financial, social, and economic impact. He stressed the need to enhance the cooperation between Japan and Mekong countries in their efforts for both pandemic response and economic recovery. A 10-day drought in Magui Township is likely to damage the sesame plants, according to the local sesame growers. A local sesame grower said, quote, The 45-day-old sesame plants are being faced with the problem of lack of rain this year. Now it is a blossoming time, but we could not get enough rain. Some of the plants are already damaged. This year, the local growers may be faced with the loss of profit because of the yield of sesame will decline double. Although Magui Township Agriculture Department received information about the damages of the sesame, the department does not have the proper record of the damage volume of the sesame, according to the Agriculture Department in Magui Township. The number of people displaced by riverbank erosion has increased this year in Magui region when compared to that of last year, according to the Disaster Management Department. Although only about 200 households were displaced by the riverbank erosion in 2019, about 300 families were displaced from the 1st of April to the 9th of July 2020. The department provided monetary assistance amounting to 100,000 chats to each household to buy house materials and 2,100 chats to each family member to buy the ration. We have already provided 30 million chats. As long as they are in danger, we need to support them promptly. The Cargo China Airlines flight landed at the Yangon International Airport on the morning of the 9th of July, bringing back a total of 55 Myanmar citizens who were stranded in Chinese Taipei. The Ministry of Labor, Immigration and Population, Ministry of Health and Sports and local officials helped the returnees for health inspections and arranged for 21-day quarantine. To bring back the Myanmar citizens who are stranded in foreign countries in relief flight and charter flight in accordance with the instructions from National Level Central Committee for Coronavirus Disease 2019, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs cooperated with the relevant ministries and Myanmar embassies from respective countries and brought back a total of 7,142 citizens to date. That's all with the local news. Now we'll move on to our first report. According to the latest data of the quarantine people at the related centers for July, there are 24,304 people at 6,195 quarantine centers across the country. The Ministry of Health and Sports has been issuing the reminders frequently not to forget the dangers of the disease. As said by the announcement from the Ministry of Health and Sports, people have to follow the health guidelines avoiding the crowded places 
and anti-COVID-19 measures and so on. Union Minister Dr. Wimya A guided the people to follow the quarantine steps to prevent and control the spread of COVID-19 through their Facebook page. He wrote that it is good news about no local transmission in the country, but we still have to be cautious too much about the invisible virus that can be infected with the returnees. Following the guidelines and steps of 21 days quarantine are not very difficult to follow, said the minister through the Facebook page. According to the latest data of the quarantined people at the related centers for July, there are 24,304 people at 6,195 quarantine centers across the country. Unyinyi Region Lodo representative from Dakomyote South Township also told to my radio about the quarantine centers. He said, <laughs> In the previous days, some didn't want to be kept in the quarantine centers. At the quarantine centers, we have fulfilled enough facilities for other people. Since the infection started, we formed a community organization with the local volunteers in the township and educated the people. In our township, we delivered a bag of rice and masks to each household. People need to know the infection that hasn't finished yet. They have to watch the correct news from the Ministry of Health and Sports and should protect themselves. In the COVID-19 period, the volunteer organization and community organizations are really important in educating the people. Um Yantang, the president of the Yangon Rescue Organization, spoke to my radio about the current activities in the COVID-19 period. He said, We have to take the returnees to the quarantine centers from the airport. We supported all the needs to them, and if they finish 21 days of the facility quarantine, we will take them to their hometown. We voluntarily tested the other people at their hometowns. With the help of the relevant ward administrators from their hometowns, they have to stay 7-day quarantine. We have seen that some have started to be careless about it. As a volunteer organization, we will help the people about the protection of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health and Sports has been issuing the reminders frequently not to forget the dangers of the disease. State Councilor Do Aung San Suu Kyi also wrote the reminders for the people through her Facebook page that people following the rules to protect themselves from the COVID-19 and they need to nurture good practices to survive in good health. Although they might sometimes feel suffocated for having to live a healthy lifestyle, the long-term value is quite significant. According to the announcement from the Ministry of Health and Sports, people have to follow the health guidelines, avoiding the crowded places, stay away from each other about six feet apart, wearing the surgical or the reusable cloth marks whenever going out, washing hands often for about 20 seconds to prevent the second wave of the COVID-19. According to the data from Worldometer, the global pandemic has spread to 188 countries, killing over 547,000 people and afflicting over 11 million people around the world. Myanmar is in the 162nd place on the coronavirus infected chart. That's the report on Union Minister guiding people to follow quarantine steps. The measures to upgrade Yangon Circular Railway have been divided into two sections, they are the east part and the west part. Upgrading tasks are being carried out face by face. As a result of that, the upgrade on Yangon Circular Railway is expected that it will be completed at the end of 2020, according to Myanmar Railways. The upgrades on Yangon Circular Railway has begun from the west of Yangon since February in 2018 and 2020. 19 physical years. The stations, the platforms, and the necessary structures are being upgraded. Railroad related upgrades are being carried out face by face. The old rails have to be placed with 82 feet long ones in order to reduce the segments existing between railway stations. Swayman reports. 
The measures to upgrade Yangon Cycular Railway have been divided into two sections, the east part and the west part. Upgrading talks are being carried out phase by phase. As a result of that, the upgrades on Yangon Cycular Railway is expected that it will be completed at the end of 2020, according to Myanmar Railways MR. The upgrades on Yangon Cycular Railway has begun from the west of Yangon since February and 2018 to 2019 fiscal years. The stations, the platforms and the necessary structures are being upgraded. Railroad-related upgrades are being carried out phase by phase. The old rails have to be placed in 82 feet 25 meter long ones in order to reduce segments existing between railway stations. Level crossings are also being repaired. Proper drainage system has to be performed to remove rainwater left on the railroads. Uzo Alwin, Deputy General Manager of Traffic No. 7 Division of Yangon and the MR said. The west part of Yangon has been almost finished so far. The drainage system has been still left to carry out a little. In the east part of Yangon from the Nyingong to Bayasegong, especially down and up railroad has been finished. From Bayasegong to Yegu, inner railroads have been already repaired. Outer railroads are under repair. The repair of the railroad from Boyasegon to Busonda has been almost finished. We will have to continue the railroad from Yegu to Busonda. We expect circular railroad upgrade will be complete in December. After the railroads are upgraded, we will go on railway signals. We are planning the existing system to be changed into automatic system. The current system is also the automatic one, but it has been used for many years. It does not work properly now. The whole circular railway must be totally changed into the auto system. Towers will have to be built in Jimyandai, the Nyingong, Inseng, Mingladong, and Bayasegong railway stations. They are intended to control railway signals. All the construction tasks have been complete, but signal-related lines will have to be connected and machines will be installed as well. well no? Uh, Yangon Circular Railway circular trains are currently allowed to run at a speed of 25 miles per hour, but they are running at a speed of 15 or 20 miles per hour due to the difficulty of the railroad. Accordingly, circular trains couldn't run the exit schedule and sometimes they broke down. For these reasons, with the assistance of the JICA, the MR is cooperating with the JICA in upgrading railroads and railway stations. The repair work and upgrades delayed because of the COVID-19 outbreak, although all the work was formally planned to stop in the rainy season. But the MR is carrying out the tasks to finish the projects within the targeted time frame despite difficulties in the rainy season. Ujo Miole, Assistant Manager of Operation, Number 7 Division of Yangon and the Amur said. We have to change the original design and it takes a little long. The original design showed the railroad from Jimenai and Pialan is going just like the train. According to the negotiation of the relevant authorities, the design has to be changed from start to end. Level crossings and reinforced bridges are made with Japanese design. The most important thing is that no rainwater is left on the railroads. If there is no rainwater, it will damage the railroads. So most of the commuters mainly use Yangon Circular Railroad. But maintenance can be carried out in time and so it became worse. Such a time, with the assistance of JICA, upgrading tasks are being undertaken. Only when the upgrades have been finished, we can provide better service for the passengers. For that reason, we are collaborating with the staffs of Myanmar Railways and technicians from JICA for timely completion of the upgrades. Before the COVID-19, there were 168 circular train runs. There were about 50,000 passengers a day. Now there are about 54 circular train runs a day with about 15,000 passengers. Uji Dan, the retired officer from MR, who is living in the Gomyote South, said, I am a regular train passenger. Now the trains are running as scheduled and the passengers are not so many. It is convenient for me to take a train. With regard to the COVID-19, the educative guidelines issued by the relevant departments are very encouraging. I thank the responsible persons of the MR for arranging hand wash basins. The passengers are very careful about wearing face masks and washing hands. 
the relevant department is carrying out anti-COVID-19 measures to prevent and control the spread of virus. Yangon Circular Railroad is 29.5 miles long with 38 circular railway stations and 17 in the outskirts. It is using 12 RBE coaches and 13 ordinary coaches. Within 15 miles, the circular train tickets is worth 100 jets per passenger and above 15 miles, it costs 200 jets per passenger. That's the report on Yangon Circular Railway upgrade expected to be complete at the end of 2020. For the national prestige value, the National Library of Myanmar is going to be opened at the renovated historic four-story building, which exists in the downtown area, was first planned to open in April 2020. But due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the launch of the National Library of Myanmar has been postponed and the authorities are still deciding for the opening date. Although the library is still not opened, Bookworms are provided online public access catalog starting from the 3rd of April. Chuti Ridu and Soyrana have more. For the national prestige value, the National Library of Myanmar is going to be opened at the renovated historic four-storied building which exists in the downtown area to provide enriched reading and learning to the people. It was first planned to open in April 2020. But due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the launch of the National Library Myanmar has been postponed and the authorities are still deciding for the opening date. Although the library is still not opened, bookworms are provided online public access catalog that the library preserves including old magazines, journals and books, educational resources, archaeological collections, manuscripts, religious literature books, children's book collection, and so on, starting from the 3rd of April. Dr. Kathy A., the deputy director of National Library, told MI Radio about the current available services from National Library Myanmar despite the COVID-19 outbreak. She said, all the settings for the library have been already prepared and we have also planned for the grand opening for the NLM, but it has been postponed because of the COVID-19 outbreak. For the people who can't wait to read books here, we have introduced an online platform for the books. Also, our steps came from different places. So in order to prevent the virus spread, 50% of the steps have to work in terms to provide service the e-resources user. We have difficulties in providing service for the users when we only have half of the workers. People also contact us through Facebook page about the opening date of the library. Some services can only be provided at libraries but are online. So we will announce officially if the date is confirmed. Libraries are now transforming into digital period, which combines all the knowledge and technology only at one place. Libraries in universities also play an important role in library sector. All the universities have at least one library and many bookworms. As all the universities are closed due to the COVID-19 outbreak, the university students also have to rely on the library's online transactions for their related studies and for their hobbies during the stay-at-home period. The official University Central Library website for the collection of the digital catalogs for all 14 universities in Yangon and Mandalay regions, Mon and Rakhine states are also available. Chief Librarian of University Central Library, Dr. Lang Lang Ji said. The university's central library gets the budgets from the Ministry of Education to improve the quality of the books in order to reduce the problems in writing the curriculum by providing international standardized books. During this period, the users can search the union catalogs on UCL website and can contact us through email. Then we will provide digitized ebooks depending on the book's condition. We provide service through online transaction. The university's central library is reopened on 20th April, but along with the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Athens Sports by limiting the guests 
wearing masks, applying social distancing, and separating their counters. Otherwise, online service is still running. Libraries support their students' further education. Being able to choose the topics that they want to read increases the ability to know their strengths and favors. Sign can say that students from National Management Degree College share his opinions. I go to university library rather than going to public libraries. As it is a quiet place, I go there whenever I get free time and spend time by reading books or listening sounds. When the COVID-19 outbreak occurs, people only stay at home and they prefer to read books online. I think the online transaction makes it easy for some people, but for those who love books a lot, might not like it. Of course, reading books online saves time and money, but for some people, including me, loves. The combination of the touch of paper and silence at libraries. There are still challenges to the emergence of the e-libraries. With the advanced technologies, there will still be advantages and also disadvantages for the newly introduced platforms and difficulties for the public to get used to it. Thus, a report on online services becoming widespread in library sector. With the collaboration of the several social organizations and other related departments, the government has been strictly imposing the social distancing rules and regulations to the people, and especially to the people who have returned from abroad. More than 150 people who returned back to Myanmar in last month were kept at West Yangon Technology University for 21 days, and they are reportedly free of the infection. Wilson has the ground situation. The government has been fetching Myanmar workers from different countries as they are not able to return on their own. So far, the returnees from Thailand, Malaysia are the highest in number. To contain the further widespread of the virus, these returnees from abroad must be carefully watched under special care, which is called quarantine. West Yangon Technology University is one of many places where returnees from abroad are kept under watchful eyes of the government for 21 days. And they also go through medical tests for any possible infection of the virus at least twice during their stay at this quarantine center. Makin Suemin is one of the returnees from Malaysia who returned to Myanmar in the last month with a special plan of the government, and she completed her quarantine days on 9th of July, and she was ready to go home to her family. And speaking on what is her feeling on the completion of the quarantine time. And ready to meet her family, and she said, "Oh, when the my time is when the I need to learn my Wulu, some of that. Oh, I'm a bit old, but now going to be a little bit slow. I am so happy to go home. I was not able to sleep for the whole last night. The feeling of knowing I would be going home tomorrow made me so excited for the whole night. For the sake of health and the good of the public, I stayed here." Everything was going well here, from small to big things. The staff here took care of us really well. All I want to say is, I am grateful to everyone, from the staff here to the highest officials of the government. We have been given a certificate on completion of 21 days quarantine here. So when I get back to my place, I will take another seven days of stay-at-home program. For the returnees who are kept in this quarantine center, everything from food to a cup of coffee is provided by the government. 152 returnees have completed their quarantine time in this campus on 9th of July, and they were given a lift to their respective highway bus terminals. And if they are from within Yangon, they will be dropped at their respective places. Go Mong Yen is the vice chairman of Yangon Rescue Organizations, and speaking on how this. Organization has been looking up to the returnees and arranging for their return to home, and he said, "All these returnees have been watched for 21 days in this quarantine center. They have gone through medical tests for twice. They are all clear of the infection. They are all safe to go home. We are arranging to send them back to their home." We drop them to highway bus terminal. From there, they will go on their own. 
But if the return is from Yangon, then we drop them to their homes. For our organization, it is not about whether we get the support from the government or not. We need to do what we can, and we must help each other in this time of crisis. What we see here is we are collaborating with the relevant ministry and respect the departments of administration along with the organizations. We do both fetching the returnees for quarantine time and dropping them to their places after they have completed their time in quarantine. Umio is the officer in charge for the returnees who are kept in the hostels of West Yangon Technology University, and he also spoke and said. Here we make sure that whoever is going through quarantine, they must stay alone or they must not engage in any of the social gathering or activities. When they first arrive here, we take the medical sample for the test of possible infection and then when they complete the period, we take the sample again for the second time. We restrict them from going out and twice in a day, we check their body temperature. If there is any pregnant women, we give them special care, which we have five of them here today. The returnees will be dropped at the highway bus terminal by social workers from there, and they will go on of their own to their respective places. This is Willinson for MI Radio. And that's all we have for today's reports, and it's time to check on some international news here on Myanmar Today. Brazilian researchers are studying samples of the novel coronavirus found in the country much earlier than Brazil's first official case. They're trying to understand how the virus has evolved since. The virus was found in frozen sewage samples in the southern state of Santa Catarina, dating back to November 2019. The first case of COVID-19 in the state of Santa Catarina was officially recorded in the capital, Florianópolis, on March 12th, about three weeks after the first patient was diagnosed in Brazil on February 26th. But now researchers have evidence that the coronavirus was already in the city in November 2019. They found it looking under manholes like this as they went over samples of raw sewage collected regularly by the Federal University of Santa Catarina and kept frozen for future study. The team recently published a report on their findings which has yet to be evaluated. On medrvix.com, which distributes reports on medical, clinical and health sciences and says the virus was not present in the samples dated late October and early November, but that SARS-CoV-2 was found in late November and every month thereafter until March 2020. The Chinese and Indian border defense forces have taken effective measures to disengage from frontline contact in the Galavan Valley on the Sino-Indian border, based on the consensus reached at the recent commander-level military talks. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian told reporters on Thursday at a regular press conference. Some Indian media outlets reported on Wednesday that disengagement process between the two armies at friction points along the line of the actual control has been completed. Both sides have been disengaged and moved back by 131.5 kilometers from the friction points. Now, 已经采取有效措施脱离一线接触希望印方同中方相向而行以实际行动落实好双方达成的各项共识共同推动边境地区局势进一步缓和降温 As the coronavirus crisis expands in the United States, President Donald Trump threatened on Wednesday to hold back federal money if school districts don't bring their students back. 
Vice President Mike Pence announced that the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention would be issuing new guidance next week that will give all new tools to U.S. schools. The recommendations will keep students safe, he said, but the president said, today, we just don't want the guidance to be too tough. Elsewhere in the nation, many states continue to confront a resurgence of the virus, which has claimed more than 130,000 lives in the United States. But safety obstacles in schools can be surmounted, Trump insisted, and reopening is important for the children and families. May cut off funding if not open, unquote. As states across the United States battle the surge in COVID-19 cases, Hospitals are once again coming under immense pressure. The challenge is just saving lives. Hospitals are also fighting to stay afloat. As coronavirus case numbers spiked in March and April, hospitals in the U.S. scrambled to buy supplies like personal protective equipment and ventilators. That sudden unexpected cost coincided with the suspension of non-essential treatments many of which generates a lot of money for hospitals. Add in the unique structure of the U.S. healthcare system, and hospitals can quickly feel financial pressure. Most of the COVID-19 patients were elderly uh, and low income. Uh, and so it was really the public insurance companies, Medicaid and Medicare, that were re reimbursing for the COVID-related activities. And so they were losing sort of the, the lucrative commercial reimbursement and getting a little bit more sort of, sort of public sector reimbursement, but it certainly didn't make up the difference. Hospitals in early coronavirus hotspots like New York are starting to perform so-called elective surgeries such as hip replacements by applying for waivers. But in other states, including Texas, where case numbers are shooting up, the lucrative procedures are being suspended again. Even in rural areas that haven't had many coronavirus cases, some people are staying clear of hospitals due to fears about contracting the disease. With more than 120 rural hospitals closing since 2010, that section of the U.S. healthcare system was already in trouble before the pandemic. We need to make sure that the public understands that rural hospitals are very safe, uh, that they are ready to take care of patients. Uh, and keep them safe from contracting uh, coronavirus while they're in the facility. Uh, this is very important, especially if you're experiencing symptoms like stroke or heart attack. Uh, don't die of doubt. The American Hospital Association estimates the industry is facing more than $300 billion in losses due to the coronavirus this year, and hospitals are already going bankrupt. Even if states can fully reopen again soon, hospitals won't be able to make back all of their lost revenue. And that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar Today. I am Aga jo. Have a great day, everyone. Stay home, stay safe. Goodbye.